This week on The Wire, investors tip to surge if Labor wins, housing slump to end, and RBA cut looms. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and managing director of Infinite Wealth, having trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be home ownership, travel and lifestyle, all early retirement. Most importantly, they did it all using only what they currently have available to them right now. So if you're someone that uh, sounds like that, then you may want to get in contact with us. Uh, but we're, here we are on The Wire, right? The Week in Real Estate. We're covering all the top stories happening from The Week in Real Estate. Of course, we love to see your interaction with these uh, posts and live broadcasts. So, uh, you know, give us a wave or, you know, like, love, angry. Uh, send us a question if you want me to answer one of your questions live on our Just Ask Tim video series. You can always stick a question down. And of course, the only other thing we ask you to do is share this information with your valuable friends and family. Thanks for the wave there, Matt. Um, all right, let's get into the top stories happening this week. So investors uh, tip to investors tip to surge if Labor wins. So property experts are predicting a likely surge in investor activity if Labor wins the federal election. So a shortened Labor government would restrict ne negative gearing to investors who buy newly built dwellings and increase the capital gains tax uh, with the changes to start in January 2020. So properties purchased before then will be grandfathered with industry experts experts predicting investors will act before the end of 2019 to acquire properties that will retain the current concession. So a tip to see probably a huge spike and maybe a mini boom between now and the end of the year with investors looking to get into the market before losing their negative gearing and cap capital gains tax discount. Award-winning buyers agent Rich Harvey of Property Buyer says a labor win on the 18th of May might create a mini boom with heightened investor activity. Uh, if labor wins, it will provide impetus for an uptick in the market, a mini boom boom perhaps, with increased inquiry for established property before the deadline for the removal of the negative gearing benefits. That's what uh, that was what Rich Harvey says. Uh, continuing, he says that is likely to be combined with at least one cut in official interest rates. Now, the biggest handwind at the moment is tight credit, but once that starts to flow more, more easily, and we're certainly seeing that happening right now, um, there'll be a catalyst for a recovery in the big city markets. Okay, so, you know, once again, if you're looking at someone who's interested in, here we go. I'm flying down there. Uh, if you're interested in someone who's looking to, or you're someone who's looking to invest, then uh, obviously getting in before the changes to the capital gains tax and negative gearing come in. That's of course if Labor wins, which does look like um, what's going to happen. But at the same time, uh, doesn't look like they're going to have the numbers in the Senate, which means they're going to struggle to get these changes through the Senate. Um, our second top story for this week: uh, housing slump to end. So all signs are. Uh, point to an early bottoming of the, uh, the housing markets in major cities, and this is according to the Australian Financial Review. CoreLogix data has shown a consistent easing in house price falls this year, suggesting that the worst of the decline in Sydney and Melbourne is behind us, uh, while prices are rising in the smaller capital cities. Vacancy rates are low and falling in most cities, and there is a solid rental growth in six of the eight capital cities. SQM Research latest data shows annual price growth in Canberra, Hobart, Brisbane, and Adelaide, uh, and, Adelaide and improved figures, although still uh, slightly negative, for Perth and Darwin, you may have seen my Just Ask Tim video series last week. We talked about 40% of suburbs in, in Perth uh, are now worth more than they were a year ago. So certainly, uh, you know, you can't deny the, uh, the, the recovery happening right there. Um, coming back to what I was talking about, uh, when you add this to other crucial data points, such as historically low unemployment and historically low interest rates, it begs the question as to whether the economic outlook is skewed too far in the pessimist's favour. That's what the Australian Financial Review said. The cash rate is at a record low of 1.5% and banks have been making out-of-cycle reductions in mortgage uh, rates. Unemployment is still at a low 5% and there is enough employment growth to see at, le uh, see at least see wages increasing at 2.3%. So some very strong economic indicators there, uh, certainly pointing to a, a, a turnaround in the markets, particularly in Melbourne and Sydney. Let's get into our final top story for, to, for today, guys, uh, RBA cut looms. So despite speculation about a cash rate cut, the Reserve Bank this week held uh, the, uh, the uh, cash rate at 1.5%. That actually marks 30 consecutive months without change. Now, the RBA is forecasting a pickup in wages growth and has signaled that there is no immediate case for a cash rate as the rebounding resources sector and an increase in infrastructure spending drive the economy. The strong employment growth over the past year or so has led to some pickup in wages growth, which is a welcome 
welcome development. That's from uh, RBA Governor, uh, Governor Philip Lowe. Um, he also said that there'll be some further lift in wages growth expected, although this is uh, expected to be a gradual process. The RBA is also pressuring the banks to do the heavy lifting on interest rates, pointing out that mortgage rates remain largely unchanged despite lower bank funding costs. So we're seeing a lot of the, the banks out there starting to reduce their rates, particularly their fixed rates, uh, with I think 3.58 is the lowest rate that we've currently seen. That's for an owner-occupied investors. We're seeing around about that 4% and up. So if you're not paying that, you certainly want to have a cheap chat with our team as well. Um, in the latest uh, find a cash rate survey, 75% of economists correctly forecast a hold of the cash rate this week. So they announced their, um, um, their cash rate decision on Tuesday. Um, but Graham Cook, Insights Manager at Finder, says the rate will be eased soon. At this stage, most of our experts are predicting at least one cut by August, and many other expect another drop after that. A cash rate of 1% is inside. So that's what Cook says. So a little bit of easing in the interest rates there, just to give a, um, a little bit of, uh, I guess, extra incentive or uh, extra encouragement to the Australian economy, just make sure you get through this stage where there's a little bit of uh, uncertainty. But guys, that covers off everything, or the three top stories happening from the weekend real estate for this week thanks for tuning in like i said we love to see your interaction so comment like love wave angry depending on which um, social network you're on there uh, of course we'd love to see you share this information with your friends and family as well and if you've got any questions um, for me and my just ask tim video series that we do once a week uh, please send them through love getting back to you if you haven't seen this week it's about perth's top cheap eats uh, i give you my number one best held best kept secret in perth uh, don't tell too many people, right? Tell them to watch a video. Um, so if you know what your best uh, purse, best cheap eats are, make sure you comment on our uh, on our other video. Let us know what it is so we can share it with the community too. And apart from that, guys, have a great weekend. Look forward to speaking to you next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.